This is the basics. If you'd love to know as much possible about how to start by yourself on Via Ferrata, if you want to know the basics, at least the basics of Via Ferrata, then hopefully this video will answer most or all of your questions. I'm here on a level E Via Ferrata. The start of it is somewhere uh, lower, but this, this uh, square here is fantastic for me to record. I already have the sitting harness on. The sitting harness is part of your basic equipment. You have to have it no matter what. What else you have to absolutely have no matter what is the Via Ferrata set. There is no question you can ask about it. If you want to go on a Via Ferrata, then you have to put on the harness, the Via Ferrata set and the helmet. This is the mandatory basic safety items you have to have on you. Them three together, the sitting harness, the Via Ferrata set and the helmet, they create the Via Ferrata system. Don't confuse the Via Ferrata set with the Via Ferrata system. The Via Ferrata set is this device and then the Via Ferrata system is the sitting harness, the Via Ferrata set itself plus the helmet. I will now connect the Via Ferrata set to the belay loop of the sitting harness. It is straightforward, easy to do. It only takes a split of a moment. Here I have it. That's it. You see? Properly connected to the belay loop of the sitting harness. Good. So now that I have this, what will I do? The next thing I'm doing before I start climbing the Via Ferrata is to clip the carabiners to my right side to properly build muscle memory and flight or fight responses. What I do is I always clip the carabiners of the Via Ferrata set to my right and then optionally you should have with you a resting system. This is my resting system. It is the Y lanyard from Climbing Technology. I strongly advise you, when you go on a Via Ferrata, to have with you a resting system. It can be a lanyard like this. It can as well be a system built using... I'm getting there. It can also be a system built using a loop, a prusik. It can serve you as well as a lanyard, or why not? You can have with you a sling like this to use as your resting system. The idea is you should have, my strong advice to you is to have with you also something to help you rest. On, while rock climbing, if you want to rest, you just sit on the, on the rope. But on Via Ferrata, if you want to rest, sitting on the Via Ferrata set is not practical. To help you mitigate the need for resting, and by the way, on rock climbing routes, the distance, the climb is not that long maybe 10, 20, 30 meters, then everything more starts to get into the multi-pitch rock climbing. And that one is completely different. But on Via Ferrata, you might also have an eleva elevation gain of 200 meters. So you have to stop and rest. Because of this, on Via Ferrata, I advise you to have with you a resting system. My resting system is this Y lanyard from Climbing Technology. I've used this over and over again so far, it proved to be 
the right tool and I will explain in a moment why. To connect this to your belay loop you have to use their proprietary connection. It is interesting and this guarantees a 22 kilonewton resistance. That is good. Now you see I have it here connected to my belay loop. It is properly done. Fantastic. And what I do again to build consistent muscle memory and flight or fight responses, I always flip this to my left. This is my basic plus via ferrata system. To repeat myself, the via ferrata system is only composed of the sitting harness, the via ferrata set and the helmet, but my recommendation and strong advice is to have with you a resting system as well. Moreover, what else I advise you to have with you is gloves. I have these ones with only two fingers out and then I have another pair with all the fingers out. Having gloves on Via Ferrata is critical because most of the times you'll have a the tendency to grab the safety steel cable and then you'll grab the rungs and pegs. When you'll do that, it will be hard on your hands. Also, if by any chance you slide on the safety steel cable when you fall and you try to grab it and you slide, having gloves will uh, be useful, will help you big time. Now, you have a system, the Via Ferrata system on you, but the question is, how do you use it? Well, let me show it to you. It is straightforward and easy. The lesson here is the Via Ferrata system, the way you use it is repetitive. You do that movement over and over and over again. That's okay because it is part of what keeps you safe, but you have to learn the proper way of doing it. And it's not that simple or straightforward. What you do when you reach the beginning of the Via Ferrata, you will start clipping yourself. You take one of the lanyards and you clip the carabiner, good. Then you take the other lanyard and what you do is pay attention to this. Next to that other carabiner, but in the offside direction, this is what offside direction means, you see? This is the same direction, this is offside direction. And what you'll do here in this offside direction, so you have this clip, now you clip this in the offside direction. Now you are safe and redundant. What this means is, in case you are about to make a mistake, disconnect both at the same time, by chance, you cannot, because it prevents you to do that. If, also, when they are like this, they should uh, get stuck into the wall or a rock or anything else, again, the probability of them disconnecting both at the same time is practically zero. Now we have it. We are connected to the Via Ferrata. What we do first, what we do, let me come into frame. What we do first is to test the system. We want to make sure that we properly connected ourselves because in case of a fall, we want to be confident everything we've done as humans was right. No human error occurred there. Most of all, when you are alone. But you should always stress the system like this to test it, to see if it catches you, because maybe the lanyards are old and actually they will give up. Maybe they have a defect you don't see, and by stressing it like this, at least to give, increase your chances to be confident that the system you have on you will work properly. So, I have the Via Ferrata set connected to the belay loop. It is there. In here, everything looks right. I already visually inspected the whole set, and by the way, it is brand new, so I only used it once. It should be okay. And here I am. It holds me. Good. The next thing I'm doing now is I will test the resting system. I need to make sure I did, again, a fantastic job. So I'm sitting now. You see, the Via Ferrata set is um, relaxed, not under load and is the resting system doing the job, I'm, I'm happy. 
I'm, I'm happy with what happens here. Let me test this other lanyard and it's good. I'm happy. Perfect. Now that the system is tested and I'm confident in case of a fall, it will properly catch me. Let's continue explaining how to use it. This, let's suppose this is the beginning of the Via Ferrata or you are now on the Via Ferrata. This is the first segment. Go from the, the, the bolt before. This here is the bolt. This is the safety steel cable. And as you can see, it is German style because it doesn't have loops with, um, it's not loose with loops at the anchor point. It is well tensioned. This is German style. So you have a bolt here, you have a cable. What I name this is the anchor point. When you advance on the Via Ferrata, let me remind you, at any moment, you have to stay connected to the safety steel cable no question asked and i will explain in a moment why the via ferrata set is that important and may and much more i was saying at any time you have to always 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 stay connected to the via ferrata safety steel cable that that is this cable here how do you achieve that you see we reached here this anchor point we have to move forward to advance so that we can continue and the question is, how do we do? Because look, it doesn't go. Well, it is why you have two elasticated lanyards. Because when you disconnect one of them, you see, I'm still connected. I'm still connected. In case I'm falling, I'm still connected. So now what I do is, I'm moving it from below, from the right of, a, of a anchor point to the left, above. So now I'm connected again back with both lanyards and to complete the transition and this movement here I name it anchor point transition to complete the transition I now disconnect this other one you see I'm again back connected perfect and connect it here above the bolt and the anchor point so now you see I can advance imagine this I reach this other anchor point what do i do well i disconnect the first one you see i disconnect the first one i'm connecting it above and now i'm disconnecting it disconnecting the second one and you see i'm still connected i'm safe and then i will connect here this above as well and this is what i name anchor point transition this is the move or the action you will take on the Aferata over and over again until you reach the end of it. You have to master this. With no compromise. What mastering this means? As I was saying, carabiners should be in upside direction. direction. So they should look upside of each other. This is one of the things you have to master. Then, when you get here at this point what you have to understand is that we humans are prone to making errors we might be confident we might think we have it but you never know when a, an error happens and when the error happens that one can be your last error ever made you don't want to get there to that tipping point of no return so when you reach here, the point of transition, never, never use both hands. Very important. And I will tell you in a moment also something else. When you do the transition, one hand is not used, but only one in the same hand. So now you come, you disconnect, you see, I'm still connected. Clip with this hand here, and then you come here with the same hand, you disconnect and clip here this is one of the rules let me give you another rule that will help you to master this anchor point transition when you disconnect and then reconnect test make a habit build muscle memory and flight or fight 
response to always check. Make it automatic to you. Always check the first. If now it's clipped, disconnect the second, connect it, and test. Why should you do this? Let me tell you why. Since I climbed the Aferata, many times it happened that the carabiner only clipped like this. And then it jumped while me, I was rushing to disconnect this. And look what's happening now. I am totally disconnected. You don't believe me? You'll see it. Across your Via Ferrata career, it will happen at least once or twice. And let me remind you, you only need one mistake to be there, that tipping point, the point of no return. And from there, well, you can no longer regret because it will only take a second to disappear. It is why, for myself, I created these rules. And the rules are as follows. Carabiners always in the upside direction, no matter what. I always use one hand and only one hand. I and the same hand when I do the anchor point transition. When I clip, I check. Now I go and disconnect. I clip here, upside direction, you see? And then I check and now I will progress. I will give you something else that you have to know. When you make the transition, here I'm on a plane horizontal, it's easy, I have a lot of space, you see I'm recording all this, that's okay. But when you sit on the wall, and let me show you this, I am here, we now move to the 360 camera and ideally it will capture what I'm doing. So I'm climbing, good, perfect. You see, I have them here. Rules here. Two more rules for you. One of the rules is as follows. The moment your hand is close here to reaching this other point, start doing the transition. Do it as fast and as soon as possible. So you see, I made the transition. I'm checking. It is connected. Good. Now I'm making the second transition. I'm checking, I'm connected. And now, in case I lose control, that's okay. The fall is static because it's already hypertension. Good. Now, what did I want to, to teach you else? And here comes into picture the rule of only using one hand. When you get yourself ready, to make the anchor point transition, make sure you are on a stable, solid position. You have to have three anchor points, the legs and one arm. So now I am here, perfect. I'm confident this holds me, like no matter what, I will not drop. Perfect, I'm coming, making the transition with the same hand, you see, always the same hand. So now I'm testing. And here I have it. Whew, good. This is a sharp vertical here. Because I'm tired and because I want to leverage my situation, you see, I'm using my elbow here to properly hold myself. I don't want to stress the wrist too much because, well, this is a level E via Ferrata. I will have a lot to climb. So, I'm back in frame now. Let's recapitulate. Making the anchor point transition is the most important action on the Aferata that you have to master. When you make the anchor point transition, these are the things you have to consider. One, are you in a good, solid resting position? Are you confident that when you start disconnecting yourself, you will not drop? If yes, then you are ready to make the anchor point transition. Remember, you should make the anchor point transition as soon as possible. The moment your hand reaches the next ball, which is the anchor point here, start making the transition. Why? Because you don't want to be too, too far 
away from the bolt below you in case you are dropping because if you are if you are here and you are dropping let's suppose this is a meter that's good if you are here and you are dropping now you have two meters the the higher between bolts you are when you fall the more dramatic it is we don't know the consequences hopefully none of us will find them out but as a principle as a as a basic idea when it comes to via ferrata falling is very bad we never want to fall on a via ferrata and here it comes into place the via ferrata set i will get back to this let me let me finish what i was saying i was recapitulating the anchor point transition action do the anchor point transition as soon as possible don't wait no matter what the moment you think you can reach it don't procrastinate find your perfect resting solid position make sure you are anchored by your upper hand and the two legs in such a way that in case something happens you use this well anchored position to leverage as your aiding if you lose control on the legs for example maybe your arm will help you if you lose control on the arm maybe your legs will give you enough time to recover maybe so make sure you are using the other arm plus the, um, the legs to find that stable position now you are ready to make the transition i by the way you've seen what i've done i've used both hands to be faster that one is wrong because i was disconnected for a split of a moment and in if in that split of a moment you lose control you are done so now you are ready to make the anchor point transition you reach here or you are here and from here you hold yourself with other hand and you are ready to make the transition what do you do you disconnect first carabiner with one hand you clip back above the bolt and now with the same hand you disconnect the other one you see i'm always connected and now the carabiner looks in the other direction compared to the other carabiner and i'm clipping it above the bolt and here we have it i completed the anchor point transition and now i can continue good this is your via ferrata set it is your lifeline practically this is what keeps you safe on a via ferrata of course we have a safety suit cable it is the via ferrata lifeline when you connect yourself to the via ferrata like this now you are safe because you have your sitting harness you have a via ferrata set and all of them they are connected to the safety steel cable of the via ferrata as you can see your via ferrata set has this loop here that connects to the belay loop of your sitting harness then has this black thing i'll explain in a moment in a moment what it is it has another loop here and then it has this elasticated lanyards two of them in a v or y shape well they are in a v shape and then the whole set is in a y shape and these elasticated arms they have carabiners now be advised based on how much you spend your comfort will increase on many via ferrata sets you will find carabiners like this they are less practical they function perfectly well but they are less practical this one is almost the most expensive via ferrata set from camp and they provide more comfort they are easier to use this is the via ferrata set but why is it like this hopefully by now you already know you have a two elasticated arms because when you make the anchor point transition and at any time at any point on um, during your climb on the via ferrata you want to be connected no matter what for that to happen you have two arms one is connected and with other one now you make the transition you are here perfect now you prepare yourself to complete the transition you disconnect the other one but this stays connected you clip and here you are 
you are connected. You might say, should I be lazy and only clip this one like this, then walk on the Via Ferrata. And when I get here to clip this one and then unclip this, leave it like this and continue, no, 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 no. It is dumb, it is stupid, it is dumb, it is stupid. Should I repeat more? It is why you have to, to keep them connected, to maximize and your, your safety to the best of your abilities. No question asked, no compromise made. Always have both connected, always. Good. We explained why we have two elasticated arms. Why elasticated? Because you see, now they are, they are short, they are not in our way because imagine if they were not elasticated the whole webbing will be on our way will bother us but being elasticated it allows us to reach the next point when we need and otherwise they stay quite close to our body perfect but what about this black thing here well imagine when you fall on a via ferrata let's move on the 360 camera and hopefully it will do a very good job so let's suppose I am here and I'm falling from there I don't do the anchor point transition because I'm lazy or stubborn or I forget or whatever and now I'm falling from here my legs are here actually let's do it so let's suppose I'm here like this and now I'm falling well, when I'm falling, this is what will happen. I will reach this anchor here. And the moment I reach this anchor here, I will keep going. And I will keep going. And if I don't have this black thing here, and I will explain in a moment what it is. If I don't have this one, this is where I will stop. And the moment I stop here, the whole force which is generated by the fall, by my body, by my body being attracted by Earth, the gravitational force, that whole force will get propagated to the whole system and to my back, to my body. And if I don't have this black thing here, it will be very, 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 very bad. Now, this black thing here is named a shock absorber. And the idea is when you break, when you reach the maximum length while falling this shock absorber if you want to see it you see it is a, a lanyard it is um, rolled and it has the stitches here and it I, actually i will simulate in a moment Good. let me put this back So practically, the way they did it is they rolled this whole thing. They rolled it like this. They stitched it. So this whole thing is stitched instead of, it's two of them, but they are stitched together like this. Good. This is one end of the... Um, in here you have one end and in here you have the other end of the, of the Via Ferrata set. So practically it is like this. And now this is stitched and you roll it just to make it small. But imagine that this, these two are stitched here. And now this is one end of a Via Ferrata set. This is the other end, exclude this one. And now when they distance themselves, what happens is like this, this being stitched, they start to breaking like this. And the more you have to break, uh, stitches to break, the, the smoother and um, better the breaking, um, the, the absorption of the shock of your breaking is. This was it. This is what you have to know about Via Ferrata as um, basic 
know-how requirement. Let me point something before I'm closing. You will, you will have your Via Ferrata set always connected. Now, when you put on you a resting system, you might have a tendency to commit a couple of errors. One of them might be to put to connect the, the resting system as well. And you might think, now I'm way more secure. Not true. This is 100% dangerous. It's like not having the Via Ferrata set. Why? Because when you fall, where you'll break, break will be on the lanyard of your resting system. This is static and there is no shock absorber. So practically all the force of the brake will go on the, on the system and on your body. And it is extremely dangerous. You should never make this mistake. You see, now when they are both connected, the Via Ferrata set doesn't do anything because all my weight goes onto the lanyard of the resting system. This is the worst mistake you can make ever. Now, there are a couple of cases where it is recommended to connect all three of them. And all of them happen on the horizontal. On the horizontal, the rule is you should always have a cable from here up. And if this happens and you have this connected as well, if you drop, you will, you will only drop a distance like this, maybe 30, 60 centimeters. That's okay. You can fall the 30, 60 centimeters on, um, on this. Very hard to believe you will have 60 because you see this is your arm length and to have 60 between you, between here and the, the cable, it means you are already reaching the max length of it. So you'll most probably have 30 centimeters. In that case, if you lose control and you fall on the horizontal, that's okay. It is good to have it because you don't stress the via ferrata. And by the way, the via ferrata set extends way more. And in case you fall, it will be harder to recover. The other case scenario where it, is, it can be a good practice to have this connected as well is when you cross bridges. Why? Because in case I lose control, this is shorter than the Via Ferrata set, the elasticated arms fully extended. Also, I don't want to stress this in case I'm falling. And if I fall, it will be only a short distance. It is almost static and that's okay. But that's it. These are the only case scenarios when you can do this. Otherwise, never do it. Now, let me show you something else, another case scenario. Many will put a carabiner here, and this is their resting system. That's okay, but in case you want to, maybe it is in your way, maybe you don't like it, never put it here at the belay loop. Because if you do this, now the shock absorber will never deploy. In case you fall, the force will go from, through the lanyards, the elasticated lanyards of a Via Ferrata set, from where it goes to the carabiner, the resting carabiner, and through it to the belay loop and from there to your body. Never to the shock absorber. This is very dangerous. You should never, 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 ever, 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 ever do this. If you put it here, just leave it there. And that's it. This is your resting. I don't recommend this resting system because in my opinion is not as practical as this y-shaped lanyard but it is your choice it is up to you based on your budget the idea is never connect this side of the via ferrata set directly to the belay loop the via ferrata set at any time should be like this that's it no nothing between this loop and this loop else than the shock absorber ever nothing between these carabiners and the belay loop ever This is the basics.